What's up, everybody? This is Tucky Blunt, owner of Blunt and More Dispensary in Oakland, California, and I'm live and direct on Cannabiscus TV. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Jay Halim, and we are back on Cannabiscus TV. We always keep it super exclusive, and we're going back to the West Coast. I know we, we hang on the West Coast. This thing has started on the West Coast. <laughs> Uh, people, you know, the East Coast is trying to come up, trying to catch up, but the West Coast is king when it comes to cannabis, always have been, and we have this lovely young brother here, I call it lovely because he got lovely business and lovely story, it's all lovely, man, because again, a lot of times we, and, and only in cannabis do you hear these stories have these happy endings, because a lot of times, you know what I mean, the, the things that people like him been through, it's always a horrible ending or they can't get into a certain kind of business. They won't open up the doors. But in cannabis, it's been an amazing situation, man. It's been opening up doors for individuals, all walks of life. And, from, you know, people that look like you and I, brother. So we have the good brother Tucky Blunt here, all the way from Oakland, California. How you doing, brother? Man, I'm blessed, man. How are you? Thanks for having me. No problem, man. I'm doing well. I'm, I'm loving being in this space. I'm, I'm going to love to get this information from you, man, this knowledge, wisdom, you know, um, let's start from the beginning, man. You know, how, how did you, you know, get to this place? How do you get into cannabis? Man, so cannabis was around me since birth. Like, I never knew cannabis as being a bad thing. Um, I'm 41, so I'm from the D.A.R.E. era, the crime dog McGruff. Like, I was told that cannabis was bad, but amongst my family, I knew it wasn't bad. I knew crack, heroin, stuff like that was bad meth. But cannabis... It was never a bad thing to me. So cannabis has been in my life forever. Um, age 16, I started selling it. Um, always approached it as a business because both my parents sold cannabis. And the way they never went to jail for doing it was because they were never on a corner. Yeah. So I figured, I'm like, if I'm going to want to sell this, I'm not going to be on a corner. Approach it as a business. And that's what I did. Um, 1999, on an errand with my grandmother who smokes, who grows cannabis, rest her soul. She had me take her to a, uh, what I thought was a, she said she was going to pick up her medicine. I didn't think nothing of it. She came out the building, white bag. I'm like, Granny, what's that? She's talking about this weed. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. You bought weed out of an establishment? This was in Oakland, 1999. We're on 19th and Telegraph, one of the first dispensaries anywhere. And um, that day, that from that day in 1999, age 19, I said, I want to own a dispensary. I didn't think that it would ever happen. I started working at dispensaries, all of that, you know, just from 99 up until 2013, I worked and been for the different dispensary, all while working for Alameda County for like 13, 14 years. Like I typed 90 words a minute, so I'm like a street smart nerd. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, and just... From 19 on, I got inside the legal space, learned a lot about it, still was trapping, um, still was working. Most of my money I made selling weed was made at my places of employment because everybody smoked. Like I would literally make more selling weed to my coworkers than I made while I was at work. So I just kept that motto, kept doing what I was doing. I'm a family man, husband, kids know about my cannabis, been growing cannabis since uh, 2002, just been around. Um, 2007, 2000, excuse me, 2004, I ended up getting arrested for, um, possession of cannabis for sale and possession of a firearm. Um, my first offense ever. And I was, um, sentenced to, I didn't do no jail time because I bailed out, but I ended up getting 10 years of felony probation and a four way search clause, which meant police can, anytime I'm in any car or walking around, if a police stop me and just say hello, they can attack my whole person, search me search anybody I'm with, any car I'm in, and anybody that's in the car with me. And that would have to linger with me for 10 years. Um, it was weird. I mean, you know, to have to have that on you, you couldn't really I couldn't really hang out with nobody because I didn't want to get them in trouble. But I never got in any more trouble. Fast forward to 2017, I get a phone call from Mike Marshall. Mike Marshall is the voice of I got five on the guy that's actually saying I got five. Yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> so the loonies and all them, they're my homies. Mike Marshall, that's my homie. He called me, said, Hey Tucky, you ever caught a weed case in Oakland before? I'm like, Yeah, why? He said, Um, it's a program called the Social Equity Program out of Oakland. And they need people. They're giving chances for people who call cases 
or convictions in marijuana cannabis, chances at ownership in the legal space. I hadn't heard of it, but I had heard at my time attending Oaksterdam um, in 2008 that there, were, there was gonna be a time where we could get reformations for being involved in cannabis because they're now getting paid off of it. So whatever, I looked it up. I'm like, oh shit, it's legit. So when I pull it up and see the information on the program, I tell them, hey, you know, what they need for me, the people he wanted me to meet. They're like, no, nah, we don't, they don't need money. They're just two sisters out of Atlanta. They're looking for somebody who fit the criteria. They have legal knowledge. They need somebody who fit the criteria so they can open a shop. That was September of 17. December of 17, we applied. January of 18, it was a bingo ball lottery. I threw a bingo ball in a chamber. They roll it around. If they pick your ball, you lost. The last four remaining balls in the chamber won licenses for dispensaries. So that day that we won a license, January 31st, 2018, November 18, we opened our dispensary and I became the first ex-felon for selling cannabis to own a dispensary. And it just so happens to be in the same zip code I caught my case in, like 13 wow. blocks. Yeah. Wow. So. <laughs> Cold story. <laughs> yeah, right. Definitely, definitely. Hey, look, you can you can close out with that right there. <laughs> <laughs> like you can't you, you can't the mic. you can't write this. You couldn't plan it. Um, I tell people all the time I'm just walking a path that was already pre-laid for me that I didn't even know I was walking. Um, and then now to be the first and be in a position to do interviews like this and to I didn't sign up for this. Let's just, let's just be clear. I didn't know that me getting the dispensary and being, being the first was going to lead to the stuff I'm doing now, to be like an advocate yeah. for social equity, to be the face of social equity. To, But I have to accept it because if I don't do what I'm doing now and show other people that look like us that we can do this, I'll be, there, there'd there be no point for me to have this position. You know what I mean? I got to yeah. I gotta share the knowledge. Yeah, and, and, and you hit it right on the nose right there with sharing the knowledge. You know, this is one of the things what Candid Biscuits is about, you know, um, the knowledge. What is the biz, biggest misconception um, that people have, especially people of color have, about getting into that the cannabis space legally? That growing and selling are the easiest things to do and make the most <laughs> money. People, hear me out. You'll hear from a lot of people in our space. Learn to about ancillary businesses, meaning other things to get into the cannabis space. Um, growing and selling are the two hardest things to do in cannabis. I just wow. so happen to be good at both of them. That's rare. That is very, very rare. But everybody that's my race thinks, and not just our race, it's everybody. All the, all the people that don't know cannabis think that you can just come in and make money off growing and selling. No, like the average money you're spending on opening dispensary is $3 million. The average amount you're gonna spend on a good grow lab is about a million dollars. And just for those two, two amounts, you're not making any money, positive green money for at least three years, minimum. But they don't know that. They think as soon as you open the dispensary, you're a millionaire. Not the case. It's just like any other business. You're not in the green right away. So that's key in educating people on other things to do. So they're like, what else, well, what else can we do? Anything that's associated with a business, cannabis needs anything. We need people to do interviews like Cannabis Gets TV. We need people that create, you know, like perfect example. These are dominoes, custom dominoes that somebody made for me just because I'm in the weed space. This is something you can do as ancillary. You can create things for cannabis tastemakers. I mean, it's just, it's, it's so much more we can do besides growing and selling, period, period. Okay. So, yeah, that, I, I, and I heard that. And that was one of the reasons why we created Canada Business because, I, you know, I have a media company. I've been doing my own media company. And so um, we said, okay, we go in the space that we're already in as opposed to doing it in, in a different space. And so uh, that, that you, you're right on point with that. We, that's, that's the reason we say, okay, well, look, let's do what we already do. We've done media. I've interviewed plenty of celebrities, you know, from Ice Cube to Nephew Tommy, Tony Rock. I've worked with a lot of people. I'm like, well, let's bring that same energy to the cannabis space as opposed to trying to do something else. And we've gotten a, a, a great reception. So I, I definitely echo those sentiments. So, you know, everybody's biting. I say biting off of Cali right now. <laughs> you know, Cali's been doing their thing for a long time. So what's the next state that you're going to try to touch in? You know, because Oakland is in, in California, been that. You got Oaksterdam. Right. You're hearing right. about Oaksterdam so long. Right. Um, 
What's the next state you trying to touch? So states, plural, uh, New York, Oklahoma, uh, Nevada, uh, Georgia, um, VA, uh, Jersey, because you know as soon as they do New York, Jersey got to come right behind it, Detroit, Chicago. Like I can actually, I own all of the IP for my brand. So I can go wherever. All right, I'm doing the same, kind of like the same motto as cookies. I find a store, we get the money, we get the financing. I come in, get my licensing fees, go about my business. Now, if you want my people to come with the funding, then, you know, we can do that too. But I'm trying to be everywhere. I feel that there should be another Blunts and More. Everywhere they have legal cannabis, they should have a social equity program. And that flagship store should be a Blunts and More. It should be another person to feel, to have this feeling I have, to be an ex-felon and have a storefront. And that's my goal. Well, one of my goals. I, I love it. I love it. So um, I know you, you um, and read that you work with Al Harrington, and he's oh, a Jersey yeah. boy. I'm a Jersey boy as well. And okay. let me be clear on here. We were first. New York came behind us. Hey. Jersey went, and then New York tried to come because they didn't want all that money to come across that bridge. And so here they come following, trying to, you know, trying to outdo us. That, hey, oh, yeah, that's yeah. not about right. <laughs> that's exactly how it was. And, you know, I, I actually played ball against Al Harrington. He that's dope. Good me they blew us out <laughs> uh, back in the day. That's dope. Uh, but I was like a freshman when he was um, a senior. Okay. But, um, yeah, he, I know he's doing a, a whole bunch. So how, how was that relationship? How did that relationship come about? So me and Al ended up meeting um, through – it was a guy, I'm heck of mad I can't think of his name because I only had met him once, but it was a group called Black Ink Cannabis. And um, one of their founders, I'm hella mad his name is not popping my head, one of their founders I had connected to. So then when we reached out, he told me about Al. And I already knew about Al anyway because I'm a Warrior fan, so I had already knew about Al and knew he, you know, do what he was doing. He connected us. And once we got on the phone, it was like instant. We like, we, we never fell off. Me and him don't even talk to the other dude no more. Not on no bad thing, but I haven't, you know what I'm saying? We don't, we, we didn't, all right, we friends now. Um, that relationship came about. We did our first project together at my store. We released his strains in Oakland. Um, had a big thing with him, uh, Steven Jackson, Matt Barnes. They all came out. And the relationship just blossomed. We kicked it real tough all-star game last year. We did some, um, some meetings and talkings with weed maps and whatnot. And we just became brothers, like families interact, kids know, you know, know about each other, wives, you know, it's just all, it's, it's my brother now. And it's all just being good. Like, I, can, I don't know how it is everywhere else because I'm from Oakland. So I can only speak on how we interact in Oakland. In Oakland, you really kind of talk, you have your core friends, but you talk kind of like, don't venture out, don't, don't meet other people. I don't subscribe to that. Like, I got people who I've been cool with 35 years who I find out is fake. And I can let them go. But I can meet people like Al, who I've only known three years, and that's my brother for life. You understand me? So being able to take myself out of that mindset and be willing to meet other people has helped me expand in this space, too, because Al's a good dude, and he's doing good-ish. You know what I'm saying? He don't even promote. You know what I mean? So just, it just, it just, it just, it happened organically, and then we hear where we are now. It's one of my best friends. You know what I mean? I love it, love it. You know, he, he uh, again, he's a Jersey boy. He reps very, very well, always follow his career. Again, I used to, I, I was at the championship game when they won the championship in New Jersey. And I followed him all the way through while he was playing, you know, with the paces and all that stuff like all that. Right. We're going to get him on cannabis, say less. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Yeah, okay. I, I got to tell him about how they dragged our AAU team. <laughs> what's crazy is he didn't even play hoop until the 11th grade. He was garbage. That's, that's nuts. I, I, you know, I saw him. You know, we heard about him, and um, you know, we had to play against him. I was a freshman when he graduated, but um, yeah, it was he was he was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was going to Seton Hall. Everybody talked talk about him going to Seton Hall, yep. but he ended up just going straight to the league. I'm like, I, I actually saw somebody played against somebody who went out and went straight to the league. So that was kind of cool. Um, he had another teammate that went to Seton Hall ended up going to the league too, Samuel Dellenberg. Oh, he, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he came out a year after that. So I got a chance to play against him again in AEU. But he was nice. But he did go to Seton Hall. He ended up going. But um, 
Yep. Yeah, he was yep. he was definitely good. I, I went to camp with their point guard. His name, me and him got the same name, both named Jamal. Um like, yeah, so I, I remember him very, world. very well and I followed him. He's just a little ahead of me, but he was the truth coming out of New Jersey. So you right. but he's always been a good 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 dude. I've been seeing him and he always did stuff back home when he come back in town and stuff like yep. that. So yep. you, know, you 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 connected with the right people. Man. I got some um some people out in Oakland as well that's from my hometown that's out uh, there doing business. You know, no. they, you know, they got like a flea market or something y'all do out there in Oakland, some mm-hmm. type of thing. My mm-hmm. partner be out there all the time. Oh no. Um, doing this thing. So I know about Alameda County. My partner live in Alameda, the city. Um, so yeah, I I've been out there a few times. You what know, a my store. My store, there. my store is literally right by the flea market. It's on the same block as the flea market. Oh wow! So, so y'all market. probably already know his stuff. His name is Travis. I probably do. The man. Yeah, yeah. Everybody market. call him T. Um, I got man, a name um, company, but I'll be seeing you soon. Yes, come on. I come out there and get with him. You know, look, this is a this is an amazing thing. This is what happens on Can of Biscuits. You know, we just kick it like good fellas, right? So, yeah. What it, you know, people coming out there because everybody's coming. It's like the gold rush. Everybody running to each state that's popping right now. Yep. What's yep. your advice for a person that's coming from a state that's not popping, that's trying to come to Cali or Denver or somewhere else like that? What, how, what's the rules of engagement? How do they come out there properly and get into business? Research. Research. Education and funding are two most key things in this cannabis space, period. Research. Learn what lane you want to come in. Um, quit coming to people that's already in the lane and saying, hey, help me get in. How can I help you get in if you haven't told or have you, you haven't figured out what you want to be in? You know what I'm saying? That's the, the education is key. Research, research, research. Um, I'm a consultant. Like I do consulting. I charge people to do, you know, I, I give, I do my interviews for free. You know what I'm saying? I want to give out as much as I can, but if you want me to work with you one-on-one, I consult, but I don't take any client that does not know what they want to do. Like just coming out here saying, Hey, I want to grow weed. That's, that's, that's not going to work. You need to really have a plan and like sit down and figure out what you want to do. Take some notes on how much money is made on certain things. You know, get in these, some of these clubhouse um, groups, um, get on, watch some interviews from different people in different facets of the space. Watch my interviews. I really, really go into detail about the other things you can do to get in this space. But my, my best advice to anybody that's trying to do anything in this kind of space is research. Do your homework. Do your homework. Learn what you want to do before you come into here, because you're gonna get screwed if you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you find that a lot of people are not doing their homework. <laughs> not even there. A lot of these, a lot of them just come hand out. Tell me something. Like no, that's that's not how it works. You have to like it makes it makes people like me irritated because you want a handout. You're not doing any work for it. I had to work for this. You understand what I'm saying? Like I didn't just. Luck. Well, I guess you can say I lucked up, but no, I didn't luck up. The bingo ball fell how it fell because it was meant for that to be that way. But once the bingo ball fell, I still had to go and seek funding, still had to negotiate a deal, still had to write up an operating agreement, still had to get staff, still had to come up with budgets and contracts and uh, SOPs. And these are all things that you need to research. They're just attached to business in general, not just can of business, but all businesses have all those items I just named out. So think about that. You could be an SOP writer. That's money. There's money in that. You can write, you know, standards of operation. That, that that's a, that's a job. You can be a um, graphic designer for cannabis space. I'm I'm getting stuff drawn up all the time because a lot of people don't realize. I just sell weed and clear baggies. It wasn't about having a big brand on your bag. As far as what the name of the strain was, it was a clear bag. You buy your weed, you go smoke it. Now it's everything has to have, look cannabis. It's everything has to has a logo. Everything has to have a label. You understand what I'm saying? Like, there's money in that. People have to design that. People have to print that on the shirts. You have to buy the shirts from somebody. That's all money in cannabis that's non-plant touching. And it's less taxes. We get taxed on the plant touching. Making a shirt, designing a shirt, no ta- no taxes. And it's in-house, too. We do our, we do our own stuff. So this, that's the thing because, again, I've been in doing the merch for years, you know, this is um I you know I I'm a writer. I have three books. You know, one of my my mantras I won't starve. That's something I came up with. So that was my I started those shirts. Wrote a book about my my book is called my first book is I won't starve. I, and I started having the merch. 
and then um, I created my own situation. So I put money in other people's pockets. X. We have our own situation. Now we create our own stuff and we make shirts for every for other people. We got landscaping companies, other companies that say, hey, well, can you do this for us? Yep. I'm like, I didn't even expect that. I just get, did this so I can do my own thing. And then we started doing it. So when I created Cannon Business, I didn't do the logo. I did pay for somebody to make the logo. But um, the Dope Media logo, as you see, as well as the uh, Cannon Business logo, we own both of those. Yeah. And now we do the print. You know, we, we print our I own. We, pr we press up our own situation. And I, we have a distribution company anyway, you know, for fashion. So um, that's what we do. And, and, and you're right. I, I just, the, you know, the lady, I can't remember her name, but she's out of Denver. She's the first black woman to get her uh, license. And I listened to yeah, I listened to an interview from her, and she was like, "Whatever you do, I remember I was on my on my anniversary with my wife. I was in Miami. I was listening to her on an interview on social media, and they said she said, "Whatever you do, bring that to the cannabis industry. Please don't think that you're going to come into cannabis and just say, 'I right, I'm about to start growing. I'm about to just start selling. I'm about to start doing this.' And I, you know, I, I look, I sold weed 100 miles an hour when I was a kid. Right. <laughs> it still is a different world." Yes. You know, like you said, totally. those clear baggies. It just was the bag fat. Does it smell good? Does it smoke right? It's a whole different ball game. That I'm not. I'm not no scientist. I don't want to know about a spider mite. I don't want to know if it's clean. I'm not that. But I've done this as a professional, as far as the media, for years, right. and that's my that's my thing. And I'll stick to that. Anybody else doing okay. that? Hey, salute to you. I'll do that. So I definitely right. agree. Yes. I, yes. I definitely agree with what you're saying with that. Man, I look, this has been great, man. I just want you to leave somebody because what, what we do need is motivation and inspiration for our people in this space because yeah. we don't want to be left out. Facts. We don't want to be left out. We don't need to be left, left out. So what, what is some advice, some motivational tips or inspiration that you can leave? Because your story is just that, it's inspiration. What could you tell somebody who's trying to get into this space who think that it's not for them because – they're not gonna let them in, or you know, they, they heard some bad stuff, or people they don't they just don't know, like you say, they haven't done enough research. So again, do your research. Um, I'm gonna, like I said, I sound like a broken record, you know, education and funding. But for me, what I'm gonna leave is kind of like twofold. One, we're not in competition with each other. We only represent less than one percent of ownership within the cannabis space. Let me say that again. Less than 1%, if 100% is max, we're less than 1% as black people representative of ownership in this space. We have to get out of the thing that we're in competition with each other. We've been programmed since slavery and probably before then that we are supposed to hate each other. Light skin, first dark skin, house nigga, first field nigga. You know what I'm saying? No, us as a people, we are much stronger together and if there's no for like i don't believe in competition there's no competition to me i come from an era i'm sure you understand where people sold weed next to each other you got 10 yeah. selling weed yeah there ain't no competition people gonna come to who they want to come to yeah. so we out of that whole competitive thing that we've been programmed to be as black people programmed to mug our, our our fellow black people or look at them crazy or wonder if they gonna oh should i lock my doors and all this we do that amongst each other so if we can get out of that and know that we're not in competition with each other. We're in competition with everyone else and we can stick together and brands work together. We'll be better off, like really, really, really better off. Cause like I said, again, we're fighting over less than 1% of this space. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Now, now that's, that's, that's what it is. That's that 1%, less than 1%. And like you said, we fight. There's plenty of room, plenty of states are opening up. Plenty of things are going on right now. Um, go and highlight somebody for help and, 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 and invest in yourself by investing in, into the brother. The brother already on one. Pay for him. Pay for that. You know what I'm saying? Pay for that knowledge. Pay so that you don't lose millions of dollars. You know, pay a thousand, two thousand, however much you pay, pay thousands so you don't lose millions. You know, it's worth it in business. Um, I told somebody yesterday, literally just yesterday. They were saying about um, business programs and things of that nature. I said, the problem is people are not investing. Facts. I said, you have these programs and you're saying that they're, they're not used properly. No, you have to spend the money and you have to invest the time and the energy. If you don't have the money, it got to be the time. It got to be the effort. And, you know, with this situation, there's no different. You, you know, if somebody has the knowledge you want, be willing to pay for it. 
Facts. Be willing to pay for it. And then, Facts. you know, you have the right to ask somebody else when you gain the knowledge for the money. But moving in integrity in business, it's so funny how individuals don't want to pay for someone else, but they okay with asking you to pay for them. Yes. Yes. Like you cannot, we yes. cannot be in that space. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, and even people would say, well, let's, let's barter. Sometimes things aren't about barter. I can't, what you give me is not going to help me pay my rent. Right. It's cool. And people don't understand that. They don't understand that. You know, it, you, what you have, I'm not saying it's a bad product, even if it's smoke, but the smoke ain't going to help me pay my, my rent right now. So right. maybe at another time we can do that. Or maybe we'll smoke together. You know what I mean? That's right. what we do. Right. But this ain't the time for that. You know, you right. want me to coach you. It costs, it costs a grip and pay that grip so that I can do what I need to do. And you'll feel good about helping me take care of my family. And you'll feel good that I helped you take care of your family by giving you Bad. the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that I got. Bad. So brother, listen, congratulations. As I said beforehand, I'm congratulating you now. Thank you. This is congratulations dope, on all y'all doing too. Thank you, man. And I, I'm gonna connect you. So we gonna stay in contact. I wanna connect you with Please. my partner. You guys probably are already connected. I'm sure because he he got out there about four years ago and he's moving around right now. Nice, you know he's nice, really moving good. around. So um, I think he he's going. He, y'all probably already know. He might be like, man, I know exactly where he is. <laughs> Let's do it. because so, he's that type of guy, man. That that you he has that type of spirit that you you're not gonna forget him when you meet him. That's and dope. so I know y'all already Question. know each other. When does this air? This is going to air next week, Wednesday. Oh, it's going to be after. Okay, so. So, what, what, I mean, we can speed it up what you need to do. So, 420 um, oh, at the store. Oh, we can store, make that happen. So, 420 at the store, I'm dropping a shoe. Actually, two pair of shoes um, with a guy, a uh, brand called Side Collective. It's a uh, black-owned shoe designer shoe company. We did a shoe collab called the Smoking Vultures, and it oh, drops wow. on 420. The shoe actually smokes. It's pretty, pretty dope. Uh, oh, so black-owned designer. Huh? We you got have done before that? that? Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah just, just man, just y'all be on the lookout we'll put somebody else there. for the smoking we'll vultures. Else there. It's but gonna you be gotta, going. You gotta show it at the store. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, gonna, it's store. gonna go down. It's gonna go down. So man, I, 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 I thank you guys for having no me. Problem. I love y'all. Um, I love y'all logo. I like that. Well, we'll make sure we get you some get you some merch over there like too, that. man. There ain't about like nothing, that. man. How can we get this? Like, we'll talk offline. How we can you know get that into the into, into the dispensary? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we'll work out a situation. All our stuff, we make it in house. And we go from there, man. So I, I I love it. This is great, man. Tell everybody how to find you on social media and, and everything like yep. that. I'm at Tucky T U C K Y Blunt A Zero. Tucky Blunt A Zero is my IG. The store's IG is Blunts and More. More has two O's and is spelled out. I'm on Twitter for the Twitters. Uh Blunt Tucky. Um on Facebook, but don't find me because Facebook is just for family. Uh, <laughs> um and then what I what I leave y'all with this. My consulting, I give a lot of free stuff. If you watch my interviews, if y'all listening, Google Tucky Blunt. And I don't know cap, but Google me and take some time to listen to my Sway interview, my Karen Hunter interview, my Montel Williams interview. Listen to the interviews. You'll get so much game for free out of those interviews. If you then still want to contact me, then I'll know that you're ready to come holler at me. You know what I mean? So, yeah, definitely. Hey, man, I really appreciate you, brother. Again, continue appreciate success. And we're going to stay connected afterwards, yes, please. man. Please. All right, now. Thank, Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day, bro. Y'all too. Thank you. All right, now. Bye.